Welcome to the program. My name's Birgit Whelan, and it's lovely to be with you. Well, chances are that for many of you watching this program, your life has been impacted in some way by the disease of cancer. It may be that you personally have faced this diagnosis, or perhaps a friend or family member has. According to recent cancer research statistics, one, more than one in three people in the UK develop some form of cancer over their lifetime. So with the prevalence of this disease, um, so many of us facing it and the fear surrounding it, chances are that we will have many questions and also a great need for reassurance, support and hope. And it's the purpose of this program to explore some of those questions and offer something of that hope. And joining me to do that is a very special guest. Um, he is a psycho-oncology counsellor and the CEO of Oasis of Hope Health Group and Cancer Treatment Centres based in the United States and Mexico, Daniel Kennedy. Daniel, <laughs> welcome to the program. Thank you. So good to be with you. Yeah, it's so great that you could join us. And there's just so much that we'd love to cover um, over the next half hour. So perhaps we could just launch straight in. Okay. Um, and can I ask you uh, just to tell us a little bit about Oasis of Hope? Hope and also about your personal role. Oasis of Hope was founded in 1963, so 51 years ago, by my grandfather Ernesto Contreras, and he founded the hospital with a vision of providing care and support for the whole person, body, mind, and spirit. So back in the 1960s, that was revolutionary, and uh, to this date, 50 years, we have this tradition where we have the medical doctor and oncologist working side by side with a counselor, which is me, and a pastor. So every day at A Waste of Hope, we start off with praise and worship, and we bring people into the presence of God because we know where God is present, there can be healing. But it's not just a spiritual program. We do have the medical doctors. We use natural therapies in combination with conventional therapies. And after 50 years of doing this, we've learned quite a bit. Wow, that's so interesting. And this is called a total care approach, is that correct? That's the total care approach. And my grandfather was a different type of oncologist. Normally, oncologists will just look at the cancer, make the uh, diagnosis, and some type of chemotherapy or radiation treatment plan. But my grandfather believed in looking at the total health. How was the person living? Why did they get cancer? What are the roots of the cancer? What kind of changes? So he spent a lot of time educating on those lifestyle changes to live a cancer-free uh, uh, lifestyle. And this also brings about benefit to the family members that don't have cancer because they learn how to live in a way that can prevent cancer. Wow, that's really interesting, Daniel. I wonder if you could also just share about your personal role for Oasis of Hope. So I started working in 1993, 21 years ago with my grandfather. And I started in administration, but I would spend a lot of time with patients around the uh, dining table and, and just through the conversations with the patients, I began to get a lot of interest in the area of treatment. Mm -hmm. And so I went back and I did a master's in counseling, specializing in the area of oncology. And that's what I've been doing for the last 20 years, teaching patients and their family members coping strategies so that they not only cope, but that they can thrive and they can discover life after cancer. Wow. Can I ask you then, in your experience, when you come across patients that have first received this diagnosis, would you be able to explain some of the typical responses that you see and how you respond to that? Yeah, many patients express to me, and family members as well, that when they hear that they've been diagnosed with cancer, it's like a bomb going mm. off. And they feel that cancer equals death. And I want to share the message today that cancer does not equal death death. And one of my primary objectives as a counselor is to help people change their perception from dying from cancer to living and dealing with cancer. Because you can deal with cancer. And actually more people live than die after being di 
diagnosed with cancer. So it's very important to hold that hope. Absolutely. It was really interesting for me as I read your book to actually um, observe that, that actually you can live perhaps with an active tumour but still have a very full life and um, for a tumour to be controlled in that kind of way so that there is actually this hope. It was, it's extremely positive and encouraging. And we had a patient uh, come. He was a resident of London, Donald Factor, the son of Max Factor, who does the makeup. Uh, and he was our patient 26 years ago, came all the way from London to our hospital in Tijuana, Mexico. And he let my grandfather know that he was going to live. He came in and he said, I will live. Wow. Well, he had advanced cancer of the lung that had spread to his spinal column and his liver. 26 years later, he's alive. And it had everything to do with his attitude and, and determination. And he made every single change in his diet and the way he was managing stress. And he's here today to tell about it. It's such a message of hope, Daniel. And, and that is the, the beauty of the book, which we're going to speak about in a moment. But the, the testimonials that come through in that book, and I remember another um, patient, Berger Rati, she That's really right. stood out for me as another person who's lived for many years, had a very full life. In fact, she was diagnosed when she was pregnant. She was diagnosed with breast cancer, but just reading her story, and, and I was really struck by the, the, the hope and encouragement that these accounts offer. Yeah, Berga's story is so powerful. I'm amazed that you uh, remembered her name, uh, so it must have really impacted you. It did. Uh, but the doctors in Germany said that she would need to have an abortion because the chemotherapy was going to kill the uh, baby anyway. And she decided to preserve the life of, of her baby at all costs. And she went to Mexico. Uh, many, many patients from Europe and all over the world come to Mexico because they're looking for therapies that won't, like in the case of Berga, kill you know, the baby or really kill them because so many of the chemotherapies are so aggressive that if they can kill the cancer, but they can also kill the patient. And so this approach of combination therapy, of natural therapy to protect your uh, body against the conventional therapies is critical to overcoming cancer. Well, Daniel, I wonder if we can just start off by actually talking about the book that was published last year. Um, we're going to be basing a lot of our discussion on that. And it was really interesting for me that last year in 2013, um, Oasis of Hope celebrated the 50-year anniversary of its founding by your grandfather, um, Dr. Contreras Sr. Um, but coinciding with that was the publication of this book, 50 Critical Cancer Answers, uh, and it was written by, co-authored by you and um, Dr. Francisco Tr Contreras. Contreras, that's right. Uh, and it's it's an extremely helpful book, and I wondered if you'd be able just to share a little bit about it. Well, in our previous books, we just wrote about the subjects that we thought were important for people to learn when dealing with cancer. But in this book, 50 Critical Cancer Answers, we call them Cancer Answers, we went out and we interviewed 50 of our patients and asked them what the most important questions they had that they needed answered once they were diagnosed. And then we wrote this book. So it's very much targeted to a person or a family member who's gen just been diagnosed with cancer. Because when you're diagnosed with cancer, you go to the internet and you're overwhelmed with the amount of information and it may not all be useful to you. Yeah. Uh, another thing that happens is that friends and family start searching on the internet and everybody becomes an expert in their own mind and start sending all kinds of information to you of all the things that you should do. But at the end of the day, you're the one with cancer. You need to get informed. And so we wrote this book, 50 Critical Cancer Answers, with the information that, that you, if you're facing cancer, really need so that you can build a plan so that you can be victorious over cancer. And it's wonderful, Daniel, because not only are there these, these 50 answers that are given, but at the end of each chapter, there are action steps that, um, that people can take. And also what I really thought was great was that patients actually gave almost life lessons through their experience, what they have learned, what's been important for them, and they basically list those life lessons as encouragement to people reading this book, which I thought was really helpful. Yeah, it's my favorite section of the book because, of course, if you have cancer, you would like to know what the doctor has to say, but you also really want to know what people who beat cancer did to beat cancer. So at the end of every single chapter, we have 50 different patients that give their testimony, but they give specific uh, tips on what to do. And one thing that really stood out to me is that all 50 patients had two things in common. They all talked about the importance of food. Yes. So how you nourish your body. And they all talked about the importance of faith. So faith and food 
are critical things to do to beat cancer. Well, perhaps I could pick you up on, on those two points to start with and talk about the significance of, of diet to start with. How significant is diet in terms of, of recovering or living optimally with cancer? Diet is fundamental mm. because you can either feed the tumor or you can starve the tumor just by what you're eating. And it's completely intuitive, but the scientific studies back it up. But intuitively, let me just give you a quiz. You're on the spot in front of all the, the viewers. <laughs> Tell me, do you think that pizza and french fries will heal or hurt you? I'd go for hurt. Do you think donuts and, and baguettes, even bread, will feed the tumor or starve the tumor? Um, it would feed the tumor. Really, all kinds of foods that will um, transform into glucose in your bloodstream, they will feed the tumor because cancer thrives on sugar. Mm -hmm. And so things that are low on the glycemic index will actually starve the tumor. So right. you need to eat lots of greens, uh, probably no meat, and definitely no uh, carbohydrates or, well, uh, uh, yeah, carbohydrates like breads and anything that's sugary. Well, it was interesting too, Jan Daniel, in the book, there were specific foods that were highlighted as being very, very helpful in terms of cancer. Two that stood out for me were guava and asparagus or asparagus root. Would you be able just to, to talk about those? Well, aside in being very high in the antioxidants, which helps deal with the free radicals, they also have nutrients that work at the level of the DNA to specifically control the the signaling pathways right. of how the cell will behave. And not only do they give uh, support to the immune system, but they also turn off signals that feed the uh, malignant cells. So by eating those foods and also other green uh, foods like spinach and kale, you can reprogram the behavior of the cells or cut off the supply lines so that the malignant cells cannot proliferate. Can I ask you a question? Um, I'm not really personally familiar with Laetrile, but this was also mentioned in the book. Would you be able to explain to the viewers who may also be unfamiliar what Laetrile is and how that can be helpful as a complementary or alternative form of treatment? Yes, Laetrile is a natural substance. It's also known as vitamin B17. That's maybe more common. Okay. Uh, it's found in the pits of different kinds of fruits, especially mm -hmm. the uh, apricot, but also in cherries and peaches inside the pits. Okay. And our malignant cells are missing an enzyme that only healthy enzymes have. And so Laetrile comes and when it uh, arrives to malignant cells, uh, it releases a cyanide radical. And so your healthy cells are completely protected through the enzymes that they have, but the mal malignant cell can actually die off in the presence of the cyanide. So it's been criticized by conventional doctors because of the cyanide, but we've used uh, Laetrile with over 100,000 patients and not one patient has had any complication due to the cyanide because the healthy cells won't react to it. Okay, that's really helpful just to sort of grow an understanding about that. Another um, property that was mentioned was, is it shark cartilage or? Shark cartilage. Right. Yes, many clinical trials have been done and uh, again, it inhibits the growth of the uh, tumor. Mm -hmm. um, it all started when a scientist noted that it, you can find cancer in almost every animal in the world um, and fish as well, but sharks don't get cancer. And so that's how the, the uh, study became and they found that it is an inhibitor. Well, it would be so interesting to explore this aspect of diet further, but I'm aware that we need to move on. But just to mention to the viewers, there are also other specific foods that are mentioned as being quite helpful. For example, spirulina, milk thistle, a number that are mentioned. Um, so viewers are able to follow up if that's of interest. Before we move on from this era, I, I wonder if I could ask you about exercise as well, because um, what is described in the book is that exercise is a um, complementary um, aspect can actually be quite helpful when people are undergoing, for example, chemotherapy as it's cytotoxic treatment because it, it can lessen side effects such as nausea. Is that right? And how do you find exercise to be helpful? That's right. Uh, when you exercise, and there's many studies that are published in the uh, medical journals, especially in the area of breast cancer. Right. Um, but the benefits of exercise include the move, uh, movement of the lymph and so for detoxing, especially if you're taking any kind of chemotherapy, it helps you to detox. But also exercise um, really helps you manage with stress. And stress right. is, is very important and anxiety because uh, chronic stress will depress the immune system. So 
we work at Oasis of Hope to stimulate the immune system, and exercise can be an uh, important part of that. I'll pick you up on that in a moment, Daniel. And I wonder just before I do, though, we've mentioned some alternative therapies. Can I ask you about the conventional therapies that you um, also um, advise clients or work with clients with, for example, chemotherapy and um, radio? Ther or is it, it's radiotherapy, is that yes. correct? Could, um, for people that might be unfamiliar with these forms of treatment, can you explain, for example, what is involved in chemotherapy? Well, um, chemotherapy really is a poison, yeah. um, and it's very effective at killing cancer. The problem is, is that it doesn't discriminate between cancer cells and healthy cells. So the majority of the patients that come to Oasis of Hope have already taken multiple cycles of chemotherapy, and it will get an initial result and maybe take the cancer into partial remission. But when the cancer comes back, the cancer becomes ke uh, chemotherapy resistant. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the things so def difficult about treating cancer is that cancer is constantly mutating. So the cancer that you're treating in a patient today is different from the cancer that you treat in three months. Right. And it always comes to a point where chemotherapy stops working. The same with radiation. Surgery is only effective in early stage cancers that are operable and when it's an advanced stage cancer often it cannot be surgically removed and so chemotherapy radiation and surgery all have their limitations and one of the main reasons why they don't work is because uh, malignant cells don't have the presence of oxygen right radiation and chemotherapy need oxygen to work and so Oasis of Hope uses therapies like ozone and uh, vitamin C at high dosages through the intravenous uh, delivery to increase the level of oxygen in the malignant cells. So if we were to use any type of chemotherapy or radiation, it now becomes effective, often at lower doses, uh -huh. uh, dosages, without side effects because we're not using it alone. We're using it. Uh, in a complementary fashion, and that's why our approach is called integrative oncology. I see. And also alongside that, um, the aspects of emotional healing and spiritual care are also fundamental to the approach that, that you take according to, to the book. So I wonder if I could just pick you up on, on those aspects as well. Um, your role as a psycho-oncology counsellor, so you would work with patients um, looking at the way emotions, or you mentioned chronic stress, for example, or guilt or unforgiveness, these um, emotions dep can suppress or depress the immune system and how that relates to cancer. I wonder if you could just share about that. Well, I'd like to start with a statement made by Dr. Contreras, who's our head of oncology. I find it to be a very bold statement. He lets people know that if your immune system is working 100% correctly, it is impossible to get cancer. Wow. I, the, to me, that's amazing <laughs> to think. So your immune system is that important, and God gave you the immune system to protect you from cancer and all other disease. Mm -hmm. So one of the things we do different at Oasis of Hope is we really work on helping the patient to recover the immune system, mm -hmm. because if their immune system is working perfectly, it will actually kill the cancer better than chemotherapy. So that's where I come in as a counselor because the clinical uh, studies have demonstrated the direct connection between our thoughts and what happens in our immune system. It's a connection between the, the brain, the hypothalamus gland, the pituitary gland, and the adrenal glands. So if you have a negative thought, if you're under stress or anxiety, fear constantly, then your body is going to be sending signals that will release uh, hormones from your adrenal glands that will depress the immune system. Uh, those hormones like cortisol are designed to give you extra strength in a burst. Yes. Uh, but it comes at the expense of the immune system. And so we try to help patients manage stress and to generate thoughts that will keep them peaceful so that the adrenal glands will not be overactive. That translates into boosting the immune system. So it's not just a matter of trying to make the patient feel better and happy. Um, the emotional therapies that we do are really a part of the cancer therapy. And I predict that 50 years from now, 
we won't be giving drug therapy anymore. We'll just be doing emotional therapy because your body is a pharmaceutical lab. It can produce anything it needs to heal. Oh. And right now there are studies in the universities where they're trying to uh, determine dosages of happy thoughts to <laughs> produce the healing substances in your body. So one day uh, they'll come Hopefully I'll still be alive and, <laughs> and I'll be able to pres prescribe. Think about a happy day at the park with your family for 4.5 minutes per day. <laughs> well, I know that one section in the book also referred to laughter and the significance of laughter and actually how, I mean, is that connected to this sort of a, the, the emotional side of this, if people actually can laugh? How does that actually enhance the immune system? It really does. When people are stressed, we know that the blood pressure will go up. Yeah. So one day I did my own study in a, a group at Oasis of Hope, and I had the nurses take the blood pressure of all the patients and write down the baseline blood pressure. And I did all types of uh, relaxation techniques with the patients, but the only thing that brought the blood pressure down from every single patient was laughter. My and I was just telling jokes. I was trying to make them laugh, and I think they laughed at me because I wasn't really funny, and, <laughs> and they all responded. So we do a lot of laughter therapy at Oasis of Hope. Wow. And now what about the spiritual aspect? Because this to me was just so interesting the way, I mean, you, you were talking about this total care approach and it's so interesting to me, the role of faith, the role of prayer, the role of worship. Even in the book, it mentions Jesus as, is it the chief physician? That's, uh, that, that's what you have in your kind of um, philosophy when it comes to Oasis of Hope. Jesus as the, the great physician, the healer. I mean, I think that's br a brilliant starting place. Would you be able to talk about about the spiritual aspects of treatment. That's right. Well, what science understands is the connection between uh, the mind and the body. So from the moment of cognition, how uh, we form neural pathways in the brain that go to the uh, glands and, and really start stimulating the production of all types of substances, proteins, hormones. But what science has not been able to determine is what happens before cognition. So wow. uh, before you think, what is it? And the answer is spiritual fortitude, the strength of your spiritual life. And so from the spirit, from the abundance of what's in your spirit comes forth your emotions, either negative or positive. Wow. So if we can build our relationship with God and uh, that will help us to foster healing thoughts. Um, the, the patients that, that come for treatment, are they always open to this or do, is it different for different patients? What's your experience? The majority of patients are very open to getting spiritual support mm -hmm. because it's life or death to them. Yeah. They don't have the luxury of sitting around and debating and arguing what spiritual truth is. They come very vulnerable, open, and they wish it uh, to explore. So we have patients from all faiths that come to Oasis of Hope. Um, though our counseling and our praise and worship are uh, Christ-centric. Um, last week we had a patient from Abu Dhabi um, who's Muslim, and I had another patient in that was Buddhist, but they were very open to the ministry because they, they know they need the spiritual support, and they start arguing about things and they just receive the, the care that we can give. Well, Daniel, we're in the last few minutes of the program and I just thought it would be really helpful um, if, you were, if you're able to share with the viewers, firstly, um, how they're able to, to access the book. Maybe you could share about the website and what resources you have available there. Um, that would be really helpful. Well, yes, um, 50 Critical Cancer Answers is available in the UK, the United States, and, and in Europe as well. I would suggest just putting in the word 50 Critical Cancer Answer answers on the search. I'm not sure which, if Amazon.com exists here, <laughs> but uh, you can find it on the web and in Christian bookstores. You can also find it at our um, website, oasisofhope.com, and we have it so you can download it to uh, whatever iPad, Kindle, uh, Nook. And so please visit us at oasisofhope.com. And you can also, if you have cancer, through our website, get in touch with us 
and you can ask for a second opinion from Dr. Contreras, and he'll provide that to you. We'll just take your medical information at no charge. And so that's a tremendous service. Mm. Another helpful aspect of the website I noticed was that there is video footage testimonies that are shared there from um, patients that have beaten cancer, which is, is again, offers a lot of encouragement and hope. Uh, Daniel, we only have a couple of minutes left, but I wonder if you're also actually a pastor. Yes. Is it La Mesa, is it in La Mesa Skyline Church in Right, California? that's in San Diego, California, ah. and my wife is a pastor with me as well. Wonderful. And yes, we minister and, and we pray for the people who have cancer at our church. Well, I wonder if you might just say a general prayer for the viewers who are watching this program. We have one minute left, but if you're able to, to close the program in prayer, that would be just so wonderful. I will. If you or a loved one has cancer, I would like to pray for you right now for your healing. Father God, we recognize that you brought healing into this world through your son, Jesus Christ. In Isaiah 53, it says that by his stripes, we are healed. And so we speak now in the name of Jesus for all those who have cancer that are watching the program right now. We speak healing. Father God, I pray that you pour out your Holy Spirit, you give them encouragement, fill their lives with love, with hope, with joy, with kindness, with peace, and just bring about a supernatural healing because Jesus Christ is Jehovah Rapha, the only healer. We thank you for the healing you are doing right now. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. Daniel, thank you so much for taking part in the program today and sharing about the work that you do at Oasis of Hope, sharing about your book, 50 Critical Cancer Answers, um, and your website. It's been such a privilege talking with you. God bless you. We hope the program has been a blessing to you. Um, take care. God bless. See you again. Bye-bye.